4G. ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. Welcome to Sporty, the show that gives you half-ass sports fans giving their half-ass opinions. And now, here are your hosts. All right, it's the Fantasy Hack. We're we're back for the weirdest fantasy football season ever. Uh, I'm Chris. With me are uh, Jr. and Jack. Say hello, gentlemen. Hey, everybody. Glad to be yep. back for another bizarre season this year. Yes, that is true. I mean, and that's really how we're gonna we're gonna start the show out is just talk about like what are you guys doing? I know in the leagues I'm in, uh, J- Jr. We were talking. It sounds like we're we kind of got the same rules in the leagues we're in, where if like the season stops, like it's just th- there's no there's no gray area. If the season stopped, it's over. Everyone gets their money back if you're playing for money, and we'll see you again next year. Uh, I know uh, in leagues that I've done. Uh, IR slots are a big thing this year. So what's what's going on in the leagues you guys are in? Well, I haven't drafted any yet, but the consensus is with most leagues, if the season is not a full 16-game season, if it gets shortened by even like two weeks, the whole season is voided. Yeah. You know, people are like, if this isn't a true 16-game season, what we're always used to, that voids all the money part. The other thing uh, – one of my big leagues is like we're not going to collect a dime from this thing till the end, and this is a league where people will play together for many years, and we trust each other. There's, it's not a league where you can get burned by one guy that's just going to say I'm not paying. And uh, there's a there's a level of trust required to do it that way, but you know we're just going to like let it roll. And I think I think the consensus is everybody wants to play. You know it's been a, a the pandemic's been taking its toll on us in many different ways, but it's not going to rob us. Of, of having our guys when you're watching a game that's not your team that you root for, you know, it just adds so much joy to, to watching football when you have, you were kind of addicted to having that, you know what I mean? That, that feeling of like, Oh, I got the running back for the 49ers tonight. And yeah. The Niners are on and you know, you have something to a reason to watch. And it makes watching teams that aren't yours fun. And I'm from Detroit. So I have to do that. <laughs> Couldn't agree more. So, you know what? Everybody wants to play. It's kind of one of those things that it's been – we've been robbed of enough things at this point, um, enough luxuries, enough things that we en- enjoyed. You know, I have season tickets to the Eagles even though I live in Arizona, but I was going to go to a couple games this year. Now I can't even do that. So I'll be damned if I'm going to give up on fantasy until, you know, that's taken away too. And right now it's in play, and as long as there's a chance, I'm, I'm in. I will say that I've had several leagues where a couple guys have opted out. They're just like, yeah. I'm just not feeling it this year. And, you know, I can understand, you know, people do react in different ways. For me, this is kind of like it resumes a sense of normalcy and in an era where there's not much normalcy. Um, so I am all in for any league that is going to, you know, be able to participate. And if guys drop out and we replace them with somebody that wants to be with us next year, there might not be a spot for that guy that opted out. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I guess um, you choose to give up your spot. You may never get it back. So, what yeah. do you guys think? What are you any, any uh, experiences you've you've had? Yeah, Jack. What have been? What have been some well, changes uh, in your leagues? I know for the most part, in like all the leagues now, pretty much all of them have adopted the IR spot. Just going into the season, we have no idea what's going to happen. Players are going to get COVID. They're going to be out for two weeks. So, I feel like that's going to be tough. Especially guy like big guys on your team, if they go down with COVID, they're gone for two weeks, no matter how they're doing. Now I feel like you know I don't mean to sidetrack the conversation. I feel like the NHL and the NBA have shown us how to do this with the bubble. Well, I mean there was talks about a bubble, but you just cannot do it with football because there's like over a hundred players. Well, a hundred. You got the players, coaches, team personnel, team doctors. There's just well, too you much. Do what, you the, practice squad. Well, the NHL, you, the NHL has multiple bubbles. They got two bubbles. Yeah, that was smart. That was smart. They they've talked about doing it for the playoffs, 
But I mean, you see, you see what the MLB is doing. They're not having a, a huge problem. That Marlins had that big infection that shut them down for a few weeks. And the Cardinals, Cardinals went to a casino. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I mean, that, if, if yeah. Well, yeah, because that's the other side of the conversation. Is yeah, MLB at the beginning it, it went a little nuts, but now it seems to have settled down. So it's so so it seems like what I'm guessing is the first four weeks everyone's getting COVID, and then we'll finish football season regular. Well, you know what? The NFL has put in strict language into it's your contracts true. that if you if you stray from the protocol and you go out to some stupid nightclub um, and you get infected and, and infect other players, you are going to take a big hit in the wallet. And you might even have your contract nullified. So if you go to the strip um, club to get some chicken wings? Yeah. <laughs> we will. It happens. It happens. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, there are there are – significant financial consequences to players that might do that doesn't mean there's not a knucklehead here or there who isn't going to care and is and is going to go of course you can't you can't you can lead a horse to water you can't make them drink right yeah but uh you know hopefully it works out i know there's you know some some players are opting out and everybody's got to do what they got to do right but i'm looking forward to another season with the ir slot i have a league that one guy said i would like to have three ir slots one guy said I should be unlimited. If I'm half of my team gets COVID, I should be able to protect those players. Kind of don't disagree with that, but I don't know if he can really go unlimited. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe he could. I don't know. Uh, that, that, I can see that lead think, to some funny business. I can, I can, I can agree with like yeah, a, a three be. IR slots, three IR slots. I could agree with that. That's kind of a compromise. But every league's going to have their, you know, they're going to, you know. Just like anything, you you take a vote and you majority rules and whatever the majority decides to do, that's what you go with and you move on. That's how I'm looking at it. My league I'm commissioner in that I've been with the same league guys for like over 25 years. That's the league I told you about that we're not going to even collect a dime until this thing's over. Um, they want to have we're going to have a Zoom meeting this year this uh, this Sunday a week before the draft and we're going to hammer all this stuff out and everybody's going to air what they think and. We're going to be able to vote, and whatever they vote on will be the rule, and that'll be the end of that. And we're going to draft next week, and then the season will start, and hopefully it goes 16 weeks and we have a good season. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it, it's going to be interesting just how, how this is all going to shake out. Well, I know Major League Baseball has – they actually have a COVID list and a, an injured list, so I feel like you might get a break if the if football does that, so they have, they separate – the actually injured players, and then they have their own COVID list. Maybe you'll get a break in fantasy if they're labeled as the COVID list. But I don't know. That's that's up to the people that make the apps and stuff for fantasy. Well, well, has the NFL figured out their whole testing protocol? Because remember when Matt Stafford had COVID and then he didn't? And then wasn't there something this week where there were uh, 77 tampered tests or something like that or false positives or something like that? I saw that they did test all that the tests that came back for everybody in the NFL. There was no positive tests and there was only six team personnel that had the COVID. And that was like a legit thing. But I think there were problems early on with like fake tests and fake positives or something. So they got to iron that out before the season starts, or uh, that could be a big problem. What a, what a difference a year makes. I think we'd all love to turn back the clock, wouldn't we? Uh, oh, yeah. Which, by the way, sports fans, just to remind everybody, Kobe Bryant died this year, not three years ago like it feels. He, Kobe sure Bryant does. died in January. Jeez, it does feel like a, a long time. Yeah. Ago, doesn't it? Because it's been the longest half a year of our life. Oh. It really has been. Yeah, it, so, what day is it? Exactly. Yeah, time is time's all relative now. Now, another a thing that's a fun this season is usually I like to not draft until like you know the week. You know, I like all four season preseason games to be played before I draft. This year, there there is not that. You can draft Jack. You've already drafted twice. You draft whenever you want this year because nobody's playing any football till the second week of September. It's going to be interesting week one because it's almost going to be like preseason without, with, you know, without the ability to, to goof off because it's a real game. But these guys are not going to be in game shape. I don't care what yeah. you say and I don't care how you prepare. There's nothing like hitting somebody else with pads. And those first three or four weeks are going to be some sloppy football, I predict. 
Well, another reference to Major League Baseball, they saw a huge increase in pitchers uh, getting hurt, and people are crediting that because they had, like, no time to, like, rejuvenate their arms and, you know, how that's not a natural thing. And then tons of tons of guys went down out for the season. Like, Corey Kluber, he's gone for the year. Verlander got hurt. Like, there's just tons of injuries because these players did not have time to practice and get ready before the, the season's going to start. Yeah. You have to think it's probably going to spill over into the NFL. Even though they're practicing and they're in shape, there's nothing like getting hit. And they're not getting hit. it would be a lot of early injuries. So, you know, I mean, maybe some leagues should consider adding roster spots and just getting more depth because we could predict that there would be more injuries. But I'm kind of doubting most leagues will do that. They're going to try to be keep things as close to the way they were with maybe a little bit more flexibility on the IRs. That's what I, yeah. my feeling is. IR seems to be the the thing this year. I mean, most of the teams I'm on this year, there's going to be two IR slots. We're looking at three in, in the ones I'm in. Yeah. And I have some people pushing for unlimited. I Like you said, that opens up a can of worms. I don't want to be, uh, you know, three three's enough. Now, if this, yeah, I can tell you, though, if this, this season gets a month in and everything's cool. College football is probably going to be like, well, son of a bitch. But at the same well, time. Well, you know what? These guys are getting paid millions of dollars to play. College athletes aren't. Yeah, they're getting an, an education. But you know what? I, the other side of the coin, though, is a lot of the athletes want to play and their parents want them to play. And it's it's really mm-hmm. tough because, you know, no secret, I'm a Penn State alum. And uh, our guys are, you know, chomping at the bit to play. We're probably uh, having one of the best teams we've had in the last decade and uh, expected to challenge Ohio State. Not this uh, year. But, you know, the plug's been pulled and our best players already opted out. Uh, but let's get back to the uh, the NFL. And uh, so maybe we should start thinking about um, draft strategies and who goes where. Yeah. I don't know. Where do you guys want to go next with this? I Well, well Jack, you're, I think you're the only one here. Well, yet what have you anything well, you've seen that, that's been out of the ordinary i've seen people taking lamar very early which i mean I, I guess you see that every year but like i've seen it a bit more this year i'm seeing like lamar and mahomes going off by like well, round let me two ask or three you guys let me ask each of you separately who would you take before the other, Lamar or Patrick Mahomes? If you could, let's forget draft position. Uh, if you get to a point where you're going to take your quarterback and they're both here, which one would you rather have? Because they're they're neck and neck. I just fantasy value wise, Lamar. I mean, Mahomes. You know, remember last year at those few games? I mean, his stats were. I mean, well, I mean, after twenty eighteen or uh, yeah, after twenty eighteen, you're not repeating what he did then, but. I mean, Lamar was just money in the bank last year if you had him on your fantasy team. Well, Jack? I agree with that. I think I think from a football perspective, I would definitely take Mahomes. But from a fantasy perspective, I'm taking Lamar. He gets you more points on the ground. That being said, there's a lot of people coming out and saying that he's going to get hurt this year because we see this a lot with mobile quarterbacks. They always get hurt. And I don't know if I really want to take that risk, but... I probably will just because he's money in the bank. Dude is like top scorer of the week every week. Well, so selfishly, why I threw that out is I'm in a I'm, I'm in a non money league. It's a family pride playing for pride league and bragging rights. But I do have you're allowed to keep one player off your whole roster, and I have both Lamar and Mahomes. Mahomes was my keeper oh my last God. year, and I took Jackson in like the eighth round. Bruh. So now I can keep either one. So. I think uh, based on what you're saying, and I hate to to take Jackson over Mahomes because th- I changed my team name to Chilling with Mahomes last year, and now I might cut him for for Jackson as my keeper. Well, I mean, I, I'm with Jack. Like if I'm running an actual football team, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes. But yeah, you know, fantasy wise, just Lamar. All 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 he did was uh, give you points. Most people who had Lamar Jackson as their quarterback last year won their fantasy league. Yeah. I, yep. Um, I, I'm, I had those two guys and I didn't win, but, um, yeah, he, he I was gonna say, what's that? I was going to say AFC North, that's a weak division. So, I mean, you got well, the Browns, the Steelers, the Steelers have a pretty good Steelers defense. have a great defense, yeah. That's, yeah, I have a top five in the league probably. But the Ravens always give them fits anyway. 
So anyway, so I think we got established that, you know, so what, uh, let's go to the next question about Lamar Jackson. Where should he be drafted? What, what is the earliest pick you would use on him? I, I mean, if you go before the seventh round on a quarterback, I mean, this has to be so. It, I feel like I'm already abusing this phrase. It's got to be someone who's money in the bank because that's going to have to be someone who's going to have to produce points week after week for you because you're giving up. A, 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 that's essentially what you're giving up when you when you go on a quarterback early is somebody who could you know is going to be one of your your pillars every week. So I don't know. I mean, I'm I I, I don't like going early what's on a quarterback. The, what's, what's the earliest round you would take him in? Either one of those guys, Lamar or Patrick. Seven. Because you know what his average draft position is on RotoWire. What's that? Seventeenth and eighteenth pick. That's one. That's yep. second round, seventh, eighth pick. That means seen. these guys aren't going to last to the third round. Too high. So are so are you going to be that guy? I'm not. No, no. But I, I usually am, I am happy that I have Lamar Jackson as a keeper in two drafts. One the aforementioned one where I can keep one player, and the other one I ha- I can sacrifice a seventh rounder for him because I drafted him in the tenth last year. And our league subtracts three every year from uh, what the previous year was, which is a great rule, I might, ba- might add. So this year I can forego my seventh round pick, and you can only keep two keepers, and he will be one. DJ Moore is my other one in exchange for, I think, a 13th rounder or 10. But, yes, I agree. I, I would probably take Lamar Jackson in the fourth round if he still lasted that long. I got to get two position play three position players before I'm taking any quarterback. Would you guys agree? Yeah. No, it's you know, I mean we can start talking draft strategy here. I mean, first to me first through rounds 1 through 4, you're filling out both your 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 wide receivers and your running backs. I mean, that's those are the players that are going to just produce and, for you, you week know, you after week. Spring. You might sprinkle in a stud tight end. Well, I'd say your your Kelsey's, your Kittles might show up, but again, they they're substituting for a receiver. They're substituting right. for a running back when you take them that early because that's they're going to give you those kind of points. But in a stud running back or receiver as well. I mean, to me the to me the first four rounds are don't fuck around. Like as Matthew Barry likes to say, it I'm the ESPN guy in the group. Don't get cute. First four rounds are don't mess around in the first four rounds. Yeah, I would agree. You know, um, I'm always tempted though to if one of those top three tight ends are there, I hate having a dead tight end spot on my roster. Mm-hmm. I want one of those marquee guys. I I would rather sacrifice a, a later round receiver and get a good tight end. Uh, years that I have won leagues, it's because I've gone out and gotten like. Like a Kittle, an Ertz, one of the stud guys, and uh, Travis Kelsey. Obviously, those those are the three guys that if I can get one of those guys in the third or fourth round, I'm going for that. And I I I, I usually will prioritize running back. I got to get two running backs in the first three rounds, and then I got to get a wide receiver and a tight end in the next two rounds. Yeah. And then I'll think. Then I'll even begin to think about a quarterback. I'll probably rather have a third running back or a second receiver before I'm even going to think about that quarterback. so I, I would give up a, a, a number one receiver on a, on a bottom-tier team for a stud tight end. I would agree. I usually go first round running back, second round wide receiver, third round another running back, fourth round wide receiver, and then the fifth round, there's a really good quarterback. I'll take him, but usually in the fifth round, I take a, a tight end, like a, like a Darren Waller. Maybe Zach Ertz is still there. You never know. And then I take a quarterback if they're flying off the board. But if there's still a lot of options left, usually I will go running back again. See, it's, but I just try to balance my picks out. See, in the, f- the fifth I, is usually I'll, I'll take up my flex or I'll, or, or like I'll go with the top, the, the, the upper tier tight end. You know, but it's, I, there's just something in me. I don't know why. Like, I just refuse to touch quarterback before, uh, Round seven. Maybe I've been burned in the past. I don't know. I've been playing fantasy football a while, so it's all starting to blend together. But I, I really try to fill out all my position spots for him, even you know my my wide receivers, my running backs, my my flex before I'm even touching tight end. 
I usually aim to take like a Matt Ryan in like the sixth round or something like that. That's so usually what I'm looking for. He should go, he should not go anywhere near that early. No. People are taking quarterbacks early this year. I don't know what it is, but quarterbacks flying off the board. Someone took Russell Wilson in the second round yesterday. Like really? <laughs> I know. Last Any spots open in that league? <laughs> right. <laughs> I know last year in the majority of my teams, the quarterback that ended up being my every week quarterback was like my, my flyer, my like right before yep. my uh, defense pick. Like that's where I got Lamar. Uh, that's where I got Matt Ryan, who was pretty studly last year. It's where I got Dak Prescott. So yeah, yeah I think, I think my flyer last year was, uh, was Lamar. <laughs> it was in that league that I told you about. Yeah. So it's I don't, well, the just, size of your league. Uh, has something to do with the draft because that's why I had to take Ryan because I, it was a 16 team league. Oh, oh yeah, well, well that's, okay. now 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 that makes sense. Well, yeah, okay. yeah, because I think we need to put out there. You get above 12 teams, like all bets are off. You got to yes, exactly. It, like to me, you get above 12 teams, whatever platform you use, you just got to set it to sort by projected points and draft that way. That's what I do. <laughs> like because yeah, that's uh, there's. The talent pool is going to be so fucking shallow. Yeah, like, I think third round I had to take, like, McLaurin or something, like Adam Thielen. Yeah. Let me take my team here. Thielen, I have, I have Thielen and McLaurin starting. I had to take one of those in the third round. Yeah, I think we should say a lot of our advice, pretty much 12 teams or fewer, <laughs> you should apply it to. If you get above 12 teams, it's, you know, that's, when you, that, that's, that's Thunderdome fantasy football. Yeah, you know, that's that's – like you know, you're gonna you know only the strong survive in leagues like that. Yeah, you, you better know yourself. Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspeth, and as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast, and check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new: our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspeth, and always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. ChristopherMedia.net. Sporty. So let's go uh, go in another direction here. Who, who are your top five running backs? I mean, I think the first two are pretty – well, probably even the first four are easy. Um, well, I mean, no C- order. CMC, the man who won me a right. title last year. Let's just yes. ask you guys, what's your first pick? If you got pick number one, is it CMC? Yes. Yep, locked. He doesn't that, get hurt, and all he CMC. does is produce. Yep, that is correct. Yeah, new coaching system. You know, you never know. Hasn't ever been hurt. I would probably still be tempted to take Saquon Barkley, but I have to admit that it's, you know, bias from, as a Penn Stater. Um yeah. Who's the quarterback in in uh, Carolina this year? Bridgewater. Bridgewater. All right, so it's a new, new quarterback, new coach, so new system. They're on the football. Yeah, they're gonna dump to the they're gonna dump to the guy who they know is gonna get the job done for him. However, they have boosted that wide receiver core because they got Robbie Anderson. So you never know. I got, but I mean, it's, come on, it's CMC. I just yeah. got the ball off. Yeah, you know what I'm seeing a couple. Here's a couple weird things I'm seeing on my ADP from Rotor Wire. Um, McCaffrey is the un, undisputed first pick at 1.05 in a 10 team league, but in an auction league, Barkley goes for 29.81 and McCaffrey 28.69. I guess that tells you if you're a Barkley person, you really want him. I have to, you know, I know, I know. I'm, I know I'm biased, but I have to say that if I have that first pick, it would be really tough to turn down CMC. Yeah, I'm a little gun shy on Saquon. I had him in a few on a uh, few teams last year. Yeah, and that's because the that Giants injury hurt. Suck. Yeah, it's because the Giants are very good. <laughs> They're always playing from behind, and they can't run a lot. And then we got uh, who's next in the picking order? Who do you go with next? Is it Zeke Elliott, Alvin Kamara, or Dalvin Cook, or Derrick Henry? Zeke. Zeke. I mean, it's the history. Cook. The history is just there. Cook. Yeah. You know what? ADP has Zeke third, Kamara fourth, Michael Thomas fifth, Dalvin Cook sixth, Derek Henry seventh, and then I think there's a big drop off because then you go to Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders, and Devontae Adams to round out the top ten. I think that. Who? Have, 
Whose top ten is Joe Mixon in? Yeah, thank you. He's the number eight ADP on RotoWire. He's the wow. number eight. Wow. ESPN, he's, he's on a 12. In my there's opinion, no, I... There's Joe, no way I would take him over Miles Sanders. I would take Miles Sanders over him in a heartbeat. Joe Mixon owner last year, he should be like 25 based on what he did for me last year. Nick Chubb over him in a heartbeat. Nick Chubb. Nobody has talked about this man. Third in the league in rushing last year. With over with like fifteen hundred yards, fourteen ninety four to be exact. He did only have eight touchdowns, but I mean, come on. Third and rushing, nobody's talking about him. Go no, back I, to your main man, Joe Mixon, eleven hundred yards. He had five touchdowns last season. Really? Five touchdowns, and you're picking him over Nick Chubb. I'm sorry. It's sad. Hey, ESPN's got Chubb at number eight. Dude, he got two hundred ninety eight carries last year. The ADP like, for Rotowire has Chubb thirteenth. Behind the likes of Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders, Devontae Adams, Aaron Jones, Kenyon Drake, and then Chubb. Well, you know who's above Sorry, Joe I'm not Mixon. buying it. I'm not buying it. There's no way in hell I'm taking Kenyon Drake over Nick Chubb. Absolutely not. Can we talk about Clyde Edwards? What's his How do you say his name? Hilaire? Hilary? Um, Hilaire Edwards. Yeah. Let's Clyde see. Edwards Hilaire. Let's see where his ADP is. I mean, on ESPN, that's seven. Come on. Come on, man. He hasn't... Has he played a minute of He's NFL gone. football? I can remember going. taking Darius Jice. It's like really early in a draft is thinking he's going to be a great guy and keeper. Mm-hmm. And and look where he is. He's out of football because he's the um, can't stay healthy. Oh no, uh, no he, I think that. he was. Uh, um, what's the guy's name? Rice Ray Rice. He's Ray Rice Jr. Dude, that, I, oh that was hilarious. I saw a thing today on boiling hot takes of some guy like five years ago saying. Darius Geis shows as like a, a great comparison to Ray Rice in his prime. Should be a solid <laughs> NFL player, and then he goes out, does that gets cut. So Clyde That's Edwards, who are hilarious, the 14th ranked running back on RotoWire. Why just ahead so- ahead of Leonard Fournette, Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon, Jonathan Taylor, James Conner, Le'Veon Bell, Chris Carson. I'm Wait, sorry. Hold on. Uh... I have a drop for that. Why? No. Is it, come on. Just because he's going to be the guy getting the, the – he's the number one ball carrier in, in Kansas City right now. Based on what? Well, I think the biggest travesty on the list I'm looking at – and you guys have other, other platforms, so I'll let you have the floor. But Joe Mixon at seven is absurd. Josh Jacobs is at 13. I would take – Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Aaron Jones, Kenyon Drake, and Miles Sanders over Joe Mixon. Maybe that's just me. I w- there's a team that I'm not touching this year in terms of running back. That's the Indianapolis Colts. They got Hines, Marlon Mack, and now Jonathan Taylor. Like I don't want to touch that. Three-headed monster. Who's getting? <laughs> you don't know who's getting the rock. Yeah, that's a timeshare. That. Yeah, good point. Good way to bring that up. Oh, I keep and, forgetting. Uh, Melvin Gordon went to Denver. I keep forgetting I'll, about I'll bet that. You can get- I'll be get Philip Rivers in the seventeenth round. It'll probably be your starting quarterback. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I'm telling you. I mean, hey, that that could be that guy that's your flyer you were talking about, Chris, that you're taking like as a hail mary at like the end of the draft. Mm-hmm. And he could be. He could be something for Indianapolis. T. Y. Hilton stays healthy. You never know. I think Gurley could be something in Atlanta. I really do. Yeah, I heard people talking about that. Well, you know, he's got an axe to grind, mm-hmm. but. There's still people that worry about his health. Well, what are your thoughts on Chris Carson last year? 278 carries, uh, 1,200 yards with seven touchdowns. Yeah, I think he's thoughts on that? too. Fifth I'd rather have match. him than Clyde edwards Hilaire. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting. Austin Eckler at number 12, ahead of Josh Jacobs? No. Sorry. Well, he – well – Gordon's gone now, so he's the number one guy. He was fun. Yeah, he he, he, did, he played great last year when Gordon good. was holding out. He played great. He's good, but he's he's not he's not an every down back, in my opinion. Maybe you'll prove me wrong. No, on Gordon in Denver. That's now that's something I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. I'm liking that a lot. I'm not going to overpay for him, but you know if I can get him in the third round, he's in. Ooh, I got my dark horse. I got my dark horse running back. For for twenty twenty, J.K. Dobbins for, for the, the Ravens. For yeah. the Ravens, Ooh. that's a good one. You think he, Mark Ingram will get 
cast aside. Keep an eye on that. Mark Ingram is is going to probably be what he's always what he was in New Orleans. He's your third down back. He's going to be a beast. He's going to pull a little Garrett Blunt and like. Remember that year we had like 16 touchdowns or something? Mm-hmm. They just chuck them in on the one yard line. Or yeah, something. that was hilarious. That's what he they did. Would be, they would be wise to do that instead of exposing uh, exposing Lamar Jackson to all those hits on well, the one yard line. Well, that's what they did in New Orleans. Uh, Kamard get him downfield, and Ingram get him in the end zone. What do you guys think about Kareem Hunt? Ooh, I don't he's, know. He's obviously got Chubb in front of him, but. He could, you know, if something happens to Chubb, he's certainly a great handcuff for Chubb. You almost have to do that. But I think him or Nick Chubb end the season on a different team. I think at this point, he he had to sit out half the season last year. I think at some point the room's going to get too big for these guys, and one of them's going to have to go. Well, I, I kind of agree with you, but I also think that you know you kind of need two guys, and Hunt's not in a position of power to bargain. But but he's just. I, all of his he personal just, stuff aside, he, that he's guy's wasting away. He's a starter. He, he is, is. He should be somewhere where he's starting. You know. Okay, looking towards your back end of the running backs, Hail Mary. I think Jordan Howard still has some value. He's going to be like your fourth or fifth running back. You know, he, he might not even be drafted in some leagues, but I'd, I'd watch out for him. I don't know about Ronald Jones. He's never really shown anything, but um, he's another guy that could. Maybe be a, a dark horse to do something. Hey, you play in the PPR leagues, James White, baby. Don't don't forget about him. James White in the PPR, but he's he's pretty much worthless in standard. Correct. But in the PPR, he's gold. Well, I got a few I got a few matches here, and I want to I want you guys to tell me who you would take between the two players. So first, we got Leonard Fournette or Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones. Better team. Sony Michelle or Le'Veon Bell? Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell. Sony Michelle finished. Well, it's weird. What, uh, oh, didn't Aaron Jones get hurt at the end of the year? Something like that. Sure, I remember. I, I think th- he did. Don't remember. All right, well, moving on. What about Kenyon Drake or what, Todd Gurley? Yeah, we'll go Kenyon. Kenyon Drake or Todd Gurley? Just because Todd Gurley's had injury issues. Todd. Drake and Todd? People are talking high about Kenyon Drake. He's going to be that guy in Arizona. He had, a, he had that solid four-game stretch at the end of the year. I, I like him, but I think he's he's ranked way too high in this list I have. He's ranked ahead of Chubb. I mean, come on. Yeah, I agree. I quote Matthew but, uh, Barry once again, what's most likely to happen? Is Kenyon Drake going to all of a sudden in like this sixth year being pro become a Hall of Famer? No. Well, he was Ooh. stuck in Miami, though. <laughs> Todd Gurley in Atlanta is going to be very interesting. I want to see what happens there. Yeah, if I'm an Atlanta Falcons fan, I'm pretty excited about our running game this year. What about uh, David Johnson? I am just not sold. No, it's ever going to be not. what he once was. Nope. I think he was like a one-hit wonder. Another another David I'm steering away from, Montgomery, has a failed experiment. Yeah, awful. Yeah, uh, him and Tariq Cohen are, are both like Hail nope. Marys every week. I do not want those guys in my starting lineup ever. How about Raheem Mostert? Is he the number one guy in San Francisco? I believe so. I thought he got. I thought he left. They are they going to run a lot. That says he's he's in San Francisco. But it's got him at twenty. Yeah, he is. I'm sorry. He's at twenty six on the list. I mean, for a running team, that's a. I think that could be a bargain pick that a lot of people are going to overlook. I'd, I'd rather pick him over David Montgomery. Oh, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking of Matt Breida was traded. Or David to, Johnson. Man, Matt Marlon Breida. Mack, there's that Indianapolis. Stay away from that. I'm not even touching that. Kevin Coleman, don't touch that. He, he's in. Uh, is he in New England this year? No, that's that's right. He's in San Francisco still. Yep. Kevin you Coleman, think, San Francisco. I don't you think. Do I think what? I was gonna say. Do you think Matt Breida will be effective in Miami, or are you still handing the the rock to Jordan Howard? I'd go with Howard over Breida, but you probably don't. Those guys are like your fifth running back. Both of those guys. Yeah. I would say Breida can't stay healthy, but neither can Howard. So it'll probably just be whoever's healthy. We shall see. All right. Maybe we should go to wide receivers now. I think we've pretty much picked all the running back uh, Mm -hmm. intel we need to pick. So let's go to wide receivers. Let's see here. Michael Thomas is the obvious, you know, Mm -hmm. you can get him in the top ten. You're probably taking him after. I'd probably take him fifth. There's four, four running backs I'd probably take before him. But if I'm down to like that fifth running back, I'm probably going with Thomas. And I, you know, my list has Devontae Adams, DeAndre Hopkins, Tyree 
Tyreek Hill, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin. I don't like that order. I think I'd put. I'm high on Godwin. I think with Brady, he's going to have a monster year. I like mm-hmm. Julio Jones. I don't know what DeAndre Hopkins is going to do in Arizona. I don't know enough about Kyler Murray to trust that yet. Tyreek Hill's pretty, you know, when healthy is explosive. Like that Arizona move just blows my mind. Like DeAndre Hopkins is one of the best receivers in the game. What, what was. Like did Bill he, O'Brien did, did he yeah, piss someone off in Houston? Bill Bill O'Brien did not get along with him. I don't think. I think they had some issues, and and Hopkins got sent back. And a lot of Texans fans are furious with O'Brien, but you know he was a problem child in some way, or they wouldn't have got rid of him. It'd be very interesting to see. I mean, he could be a huge hit. Or maybe Kyler Murray. I don't know. Is Kyler Murray going to get him the rock? He's the third-ranked receiver on here. I think I'd take Tyreek Hill or Julio Jones over him. But he's the guy, kind of guy he could take that could have a Michael Thomas year. He could. He has a chip on his shoulder. The Cardinals are up-and-coming team. Well, be interesting know, to watch. How high are you guys on Devontae Parker? He was fifth in receiving last year, catching 72 balls for 1,200 yards with nine touchdowns. However... He only caught fifty six percent of his passes. <laughs> he is a he's a bench player for me. Yeah. What about old old Beckham guys? Where do where do you take him? Um He was He was terrible. He was oh twenty sixth in the league in receiving yards. I got him. He's on the list right ahead of Amari Cooper and Cooper Cup and DJ Moore. I don't think I would take him over Amari Cooper, and I I can't stand the Cowboys, but Cooper's productive. No, nah, I fancy on uh, ESPN at ADP Cooper's. Uh, he's he's at like number ten. He's like three four positions above Odell. But, yeah, I'm I'm not picking Odell. I'm just not. I, I'm, I'm not, not seeing. Either. I'm not seeing the fire he had in New York. He used to be fired up and arguing with people and throwing his helmet. Now he just seems like he's collecting a paycheck in Cleveland. I'll go further. I'm not sure I'm touching anybody on Cleveland that's not a running yeah. back. The Cleveland Browns were good players go to die. <laughs> good, I should say not good players, but good careers. How about football yeah. careers go to die? Unless it's a Cleveland running back, I don't think I want any part of it. Wait, didn't they sign? Uh, wait, They got Hooper. Yeah, they got Austin Hooper. So, all right. So, Hooper and a running back. But other than that, I don't want it. I don't want no Baker. I don't want Odell. I'll tell you someone else who I don't want, and some people may agree with me. I want nothing to do with Juju Smith Schuster. Yeah, because as soon as Antonio Brown left the Steelers, he was exposed for what he is a number two receiver. He is not capable of filling that number one role. I will not be drafting him in any of my leagues. Anybody else have an undraftable guy that they want nothing to do with? Um, Somebody that's burned you before, Robert Woods. Oh, <laughs> I was just about to say that too. Here, here's my here's my thing. Here, one thousand one hundred thirty four yards, ninety catches, and you finish the year with two touchdowns. Two, two touchdowns. Really? And I drafted him like first round. Yeah, like, like nah, not first round, second round. But like, come on, that was abysmal. Now I think keep an eye on Stephon Diggs in. Uh... Buffalo. That is going to be good, but that drops John Brown's stock a bit. John Brown is never. John Brown's a bench player at best. John Brown's is a bi week fill in. Yeah. John Brown is a bi week fill in. Well, he's not even making my bench this that year. That being said, one of my, my one of my dark horse guys is AJ Brown. Ooh. Tennessee. I know mm-hmm. Jack liked him last year. I liked him. I think he could be flying under the radar. Uh, I'm really high on Chris Godwin with Tom Brady to throw to him. Oh, Brady's got the best receiving core in the game right now. Godwin and Mike Evans, both of those guys are going to probably reap the benefits of a real quarterback instead of one that throws 50% of his passes to the other team, Jameis (laughs) Winston. Yeah. Who's not warming the bench in New Orleans? And another guy on my list is completely completely underrated is Keenan Allen. They have yes. him below Robert Woods, Cortland Sutton, below Calvin Ridley. Come on. Keenan Allen's at least up there with like uh, an Odell. I would rather have him than Odell Beckham. If I would rather PPR league, Robinson too. He caught 104 passes last year. That's golden for PPR. Yeah, so don't sleep on Keenan Allen. He's underrated, at least on the rotor wire. You know, I'll t- 
this would be a this would be a deeper round. You know, this would be a a double digit round pick for you. But C D Lamb on the Ooh. Cowboys. I had him last year when I was doing college fantasy. That all that guy did was just perform. He was on. He was uh, the uh, Oklahoma. Like just keep an eye on that guy. I, I, I'm interested to see how he does in the pros. Yep, that could be that could be an unsung hero. Let's see. What are your, what are your thoughts on Teddy Galladay? That's got to go to Chris because he's the Lions. Fan. I mean, he's going to be the number one receiver, but he's wearing a Lions jersey, so there's that. But they play from behind a lot. Well, I got a couple. Uh, dark horses, DJ Chark and Terry McLaurin. Yeah, DJ Chark was a, a a waiver wire pick for me last year that just paid dividends over and over and over again. The same with McLaurin. How about Debo Samuel? He's only going to get better, and he's he's got a he's very young. He's second or third year. Is he going to be <laughs> number one now? Because uh, Emmanuel Sanders was traded. I don't know. I'm I'm looking at him. As one of my dark horse guys, Jerry Judy, Denver, another rookie to watch. Mm-hmm. Henry Ruggs of the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders. It's so weird to look at these lists and under team it says LV, Las like Vegas it. Raiders. Yeah, I've noticed that. I like it too. As some, you know, Jack was born in Las Vegas, and I met, I lived there for eight years and love every minute of going back to visit. Jalen Rieger, Philly. There's no no talent on that Philly roster. Yeah. It's gonna be rough um, here for you guys. Rieger could, Re, no, Rieger, Rieger could be there, man. Are you buying right. the DJ Chark hype? I am. Ooh, what about Allen Robinson? No that quarterback uh, stuff. I'm, I'm a little worried about quarterback. quarterback is, Trubisky is not getting it done, and uh, I don't know if Nick Foles is going to be successful in Chicago. I'll be rooting for him, but my fantasy money will be elsewhere. Yeah, I'm not. I, I want none of the Chicago quarterback. No, I don't think I want any Bears. <laughs> Maybe Allen Robinson, and only at the right draft spot. You know, that's a damn good point. Yeah, I think the Bears might be on your don't do not draft that's, list oh, this year. Avoid, avoid the Bears. Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net. Professional painters know waiting between coats for trim, doors, and cabinets to dry is time out of your day and money out of your pocket. Bear Premium Cabinet and Trim Enamel from The Home Depot lets you finish faster. With excellent flow and leveling, it dries to the touch in one hour. And less dry time means less downtime. Bear Premium Cabinet and Trim Enamel, just $39.98 a gallon. And that's before the Pro Extra Discount, only at The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Available in-store and online. ChristopherMedia.net Sporty. Are you avoiding Julian Edelman? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Not till I see how him and Cam are together. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. You guys ready to move to tight end? Yeah, because this year, like, the, the, the elite tight end tier is a little, little, little crowded this year. It is. Usually it's yeah, like well, three or four people. I, I want to start with a familiar name that isn't among the elite. I want to see what everybody thinks. Does anybody really think Gronkowski is going to be anywhere near what he once was? No. Because I'm reading a lot of negative things that he is having a real struggle picking up the playbook. And I think that he's still mentally checked out. And I think it sounded good on paper for him to come back. And I think now that he's back, it's not working out like they thought it would. I could be wrong. He could come in and be a world beater. But I'll tell you what, I'm not drafting him anywhere. I'm not touching him with a 10-foot pole. I might, if he's still there, again, this would be a double-digit round, you know, a couple rounds before I start picking up my defense. I, I might pick him there. I Buyer will beware on Gronk. I don't but think it's, still, it's the same. It's still Gronk with Brady throwing to him, so there's, there's, that, there's that allure to it. There is. So my list has Kelsey first, Kittle second, Mark Andrews third, Zach Ertz fourth, Waller yep. fifth. Yeah, same thing. And I think that's that's where your drop off starts because then you got Higby, Ingram, Hunter Henry, Aiden Hurst, Jared. The disrespect to Austin Hooper. Yeah, Austin Hooper is eleven on this list, but when you go to the Browns, you lo- you drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's fourteen on ESPN's list. Uh, yeah, sorry, Browns fans. It's just uh, just how you are. I, I don't. Uh, no. 
I think it's the uniform. Why the disrespect to Evan Ingram? I had him on several teams last year. He did I just, he did just fine. 58 yards per game? When he's healthy, when he's healthy, he's decent. But he, he, he doesn't seem very uh, – he seems a little injury prone. Same as Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry's a monster when he's healthy, but he's always hurt. Now my sleeper is Mike Gesicki of the Dolphins. Oh, that was mine as well. Why is he's a sleeper. Why is Jared Cook ranked number nine on ESPN? Based on He's what? Right number tenth here too. Two yeah. years ago, the Saints really don't use their tight end enough. You know, if, if, yeah. if I'll tell you this: if Jared Cook is your number one tight end, you're probably not going to win many leagues. Yeah, that's why I was telling you earlier. My draft strategy is I got to get one of those. I want Waller or better. I want either Kelsey Kittle, Mark Andrews, Zach Ertz, or Darren Waller. Those after that, it's a fall off. You could probably yeah. still win your league with oh, Tyler Higby is sixth in this thing. Really? Am I? Am I missing something, or are you guys... He's eight for ESPN? Evan Engram. I'd rather have Engram or Hunter Henry than him. Do not touch Jason Witten. Do not do it. That's a pretty easy He's not decision. good. Wait, Greg Olson's on Seattle. I thought he retired. I thought He's so, Seattle. Too. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, man, Jacob Hollister not getting his chance to shine just yet. See, the thing is here, though, I'm not really seeing any, any of these it, tight ends what? where I'm like... Eh. Eric Ebron is on the Steelers? Yes, yes he is. That yep. could be a sleeper. You never right. know. That's right. Jason Dallas, Witten went back to football. Dallas Goder, 14th. I'd take him over Gronk, even as the second tight end in the Eagles. Hawkinson, I'd take him over Gronk. <sighs> what about Janu Smith? Thoughts on him? Because did Delaney Walker retire? Finally. Yeah, I think you're right. So Janu Smith goes in. They got Tannehill. That, that might be a sleeper for your second. I mean, you got uh, that offense that has. You're not going to win a league with him as your starter, but uh, yes, he could be a bye week fill in. You, you know, what one of these guys at the bottom here is going to be like a world beater, like a Chris Herndon, or it's going to come out of nowhere or somebody. Hey, the ghost of OJ, Jimmy Graham is on the Bears. Another I reason think, to stay away from the Bears. I think OJ Howard is, is another one that every year they think he's going to be something and he never is. Yeah, we're on our third season I'm of not, waiting for I'm him not to be something. O- yeah. I'm not drinking the Kool-Aid on O.J. Howard anymore. That ship has sailed. Noah Fant for Denver. Keep keep an eye on him. Yeah, look at this. Right. That's gonna be, I think that's going to be your breakout, and it's not really that big of a breakout. I don't think we need to look at kickers. Uh, what about defenses? I don't even have any, I don't even have that up on the screen. I, I, do we even have to spend any time on that? Nope. Who are the top three defenses? I, I haven't even looked at that. Niners, Steelers, somebody, uh, Patriots, maybe? Something like that. Yeah, it's got Niners, Steelers, Bills, Ravens, Patriots. Those are the top five defenses. Yeah, and I read something that, like, in the history of fantasy football, like, from year to year, the number one defense is usually average the next year. It's, it's a crapshoot is what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's one of those things where you got to really watch the waiver wire in the first three, four weeks, see what defenses are racking up some points, and, and go grab one of them. That has worked. That strategy has worked wonders for me over the years. There's there's a team I want to talk about. That's the Cincinnati Bengals. They have AJ Green still. They got Joe Burrow coming in, and they have um, T Higgins. Are you touching any of those? Are you touching any of those guys other than AJ Green? You believe in Burrow? Uh, I'm not going to say I won't touch, but I will say I'm not drafting very early. Yeah, that's a flyer if I draft him. That's be on my bench in case my main guy gets hurt. That's we'll see how the season goes, and then I'll take a chance. But yeah. I don't know about that yet. Yeah, I don't want Joe Mixon. I don't want AJ Green. I don't want whoever's at tight end this year. But I think the it's Bengals are probably another. It's a minus Burrow as a fly in the later round. The Bengals might be on the don't touch list. Should we do that? Should we go through teams you shouldn't even touch? Yeah, Bengals and Bears, right? And Browns, all the B teams. Is there any good B teams? And uh, you got Chubb on the Browns. Buccaneers. Okay, yeah, I'm taking Chubb. Chubb. You're right. You're trained. Oh, I have one. I have one. The Washington Redskins, other than Terry McLaurin. And, and, McLo- and McLaurin isn't like a starter. Yeah, exactly. Who's even the running back now that Geis is gone? Is it AP? It's again? AP. <laughs> it's AP, and then there's like another yeah. guy that everybody's taking. Was he like 50 years old? Man just keeps Time falling into the gig. Roaming around. He actually wasn't that bad last year when he played. What about 
the Rams. I predict that will be a team whose fantasy stock will plummet this year. Yes. Who? The, the Rams. Rams. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough division they're in, too. It really is. 49ers yeah. are looking good. The Seahawks are looking good. Arizona's improved. The Rams could finish last. <laughs> they could. I think the only are Ram you? I'd want is Cooper Cup. Yep. I agree with that statement. No one's going to touch their quarterback, are they? <laughs> nope. He might be my backup. They might be behind a lot. Is there anybody in Houston you want other than Deshaun Watson? Jeez. And you got, isn't Will Fuller the wide receiver one now? That has, that reminds me of a Juju Smith Schuster situation Ooh. where you got a number two guy that's expected to be a number one and just can't hang. That's what I'm thinking. Is that where Antonio Brown ends up? That's another question Ooh. I have for you guys. Does he play this year? No, God, I've seen God. people ask. I, well, the suspension is has him out eight weeks, regardless of yep. if he signs or not. And I think it's so stupid that people are drafting him. So by by I'm, all means, waste your you, draft. I won't be drafting him. When we don't even, even know if the season's going to ha- last. If, like, even if he weeks. comes in in the ninth week, he'll be out of the league by the eleventh week. <laughs> <laughs> now, trust me, I had a team where I drafted him last year, and I regretted it because I spent the whole. I spent the whole season chasing that that position that I essentially wasted a pick on trying to f- to to fill that and never could get anyone to fill it. You know, I wasted like a top. I wasted one of my first two picks on him. On AB, you no, know, and I I picked him up at the end of the year last year because I'm in a keeper league and I'm just hoping and you know he's gone. I'm not. There's no way I'm wasting a roster spot on him. You know, he's dead to me. Too too much of a loose cannon, you know. It's a shame. What a what a great talent if he could just you know get his ego out of the way and maybe get a little bit of mental health uh, counseling because it's a shame to see a talent like that wasted. But it really is. He's he could be the, possibly the best receiver in the league if he just got his head screwed on straight and he just can't do it. He used to he be just can't. the best receiver yep. in the league. Yep, it was another team. That I think is interesting for fantasy purposes. That's the Buffalo Bills. That Josh Allen. You got Devin Singletary. Right, what do you think? What do you think about Josh Allen? I think I need purposes? to wait and see. I think if I'm drafting any Bill, it's Stephon Diggs. Yeah, yeah. Allen. Allen. Josh Allen does get a lot of rushing touchdowns. Um, he do, He's a guy. He's the opposite of you know what we said earlier. He's a guy that I want on fantasy, but I don't want on my real team. <laughs> Yeah, because he's like you know he's he's desperate and he runs for yards and he gets rushing touchdowns left and right. But at the end of the day, he's not going to win a Super Bowl. I just don't see it. Bills fans, sorry, my apologies for saying that. I hope you know maybe you'll prove me wrong, but I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing him as a Super Bowl winning quarterback. He runs for his life. He does really good at that. That that'll work for a couple of years, but when he gets older and loses a step, uh, yeah, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll mature into the role and and be more of a passing quarterback. But right now, yeah, and I think the same thing will happen with Lamar because you know you know Lamar reminds me of Randall Cunningham when he was young, and you know he's living on on that talent. But you know, look at Randall; he actually came back and had a great year at the end of his career with the Vikings. Because he learned that you couldn't live on talent. You actually had to put in the work. And once he learned that, unfortunately, it wasn't with my beloved Eagles. But he did eventually come around to that. But we'll see. You know, Lamar stays healthy. He's got a couple really good years coming. Well, speaking of Lamar and those Ravens, are you touching the Raven backfield with, like, three good, well, I don't know about Gus Edwards, but, I mean, mainly Mark Ingram and Dobbins. Told you, um... And, that's going to be one that I want to see how. That's it's, a wait and see for me as well. You know, it's it, you can't you can't draft one of those guys in the first five rounds. I mean, it's such you know, an iffy. Three-headed monster. You just don't know. But but you have to think one of them will emerge, and if you have that one, you're going to reap some benefits. I'm pretty hot on Dobbins. I, I would like I said. A lot that, of people are hot on Dobbins. I'm I, I'm saying just don't. Count out Mark Ingram. Just don't count him out. I'm not wasting anything above a tenth pick on Dobbins. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, yeah. I was gonna say, uh, do we want? It's, uh, this might hurt, John. Is there any eagle we want? Oh, Miles oh, Sanders. Sanders. That a question? Okay. Wentz. Wentz. Yeah. Wentz. Sanders. 
Oh, Ertz. that's Ertz. Yeah. yeah, sorry. But there's no receivers really worth, you know, unless Rieger comes on. Um, White side from last year. Alshon Jeffrey's always hurt. And yeah, I, I, I don't. I think those are the three that I would be looking at. Wentz, Miles Sanders, Ertz. And maybe Goddard as your second tight end. A Hail Mary. You know, what if something gets happened to Ertz, you know? And there's a lot of people that think that Goddard could be as good or better than Ertz. He's a pretty talented guy, but it is an embarrassment of riches at the tight end position for the Eagles. It's a shame that they couldn't trade one of those guys for a stud receiver. <laughs> yeah. He's one of them as bait. What about those Lions? What about them? Carry on Johnson? Nope. I'm excited about DeAndre Swift. Ah, oh, yeah, I completely forgot about him. He could be good. But yeah, that's, but that's, again, which guy? Which one do you take? Just no, no. That's like another Marlon Mack versus the rookie. So M- Matthew Stafford's obviously worth drafting, I think. Yeah, I agree. He's a great fantasy quarterback. I don't know about great, but he's a solid fantasy starter. Well, just keep he's in mind, he... he if if he was your quarterback last year, he screwed you because he, he, after half the season, he was done. Shut him down. Mostly to get a higher pick. Was he really hurt? He's getting just old. Kidding. That's just my Ooh. regular football beef with the Lions. Are it's time to start planning for life beyond Stafford. All right, two thousand nine was eleven years ago. Ooh. Right. You know he's got back problems. People with back pro. You ever known anyone with back problems to get better? Nope. They, they get worse. It is a, a point of no return if you have back issues for football, at least in my opinion. Yeah, proceed with caution, but Stafford has been a reliable producer. He's not oh. a top five, but he's not on bottom five either. He's somewhere around yeah, that 10, and I'm 10 speaking, 15 range. And I'm speaking from real football, not, not fantasy football. Right. Well, that's pretty much a fate that I wouldn't want to wish on – I know a lot of guys back when I lived in Michigan that when they have kids, when they were growing up, they're like, root for anybody but the Lions. Mm-hmm. Pick another team. Just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. It's too late for me to switch. I'm, I'm already loyal, but, you know, take a look at the Patriots or, you know, Steelers or somebody like that. Don't, don't live the, the life I've lived. <laughs> I, I'm looking at the ESPN top 10 here. I don't know. There's just something in me that. Uh, Derrick Henry, seventh overall. That just. He's, yep, I'm looking at it on, uh, same thing on Rotowire. Based on what, two seasons where he came on late? And he, yeah, yeah he does he, come on late, though. He came on in a big way, man. He won a lot of people titles last year. But what's more incredible to me is that Joe Mixon is listed eighth. <laughs> well, yeah, ESPN's got Clyde Edwards Hilaire, the eight Ooh, overall. That's absurd. Yeah, that's... He's listed 23rd on uh, Rotowire, on the standard league, not PPR standard. Head scratcher. Joe Mixon at eight. I'm just not seeing it. I'm just not. Do you see Mar- Mariota pulling a Tannehill this year and winning that starting job from Carr at some point? No. Nah. Nope. I don't believe in the hype either, but never know. Another guy I'm not touching, Ben Roethlisberger. He's not. No, please. Ben Roethlisberger. He is, he is not touching. My roster, not even my bench. I don't like no, him. I've, gonna be I've good. read some things that his arm strength is not what it once was after yes, that. Yes, exactly. It's just he's, he's old too. Put, I think I think the end is near for Big Ben, and I will also be avoiding him like the. I'll also be avoiding James Conner. I don't know about that. I won't be avoiding him, but I won't dress him too too high. He's inconsistent. That's my yes, big exactly. Thing. He's inconsistent, and he gets hurt. You know it's what? Just hard. Grass is always greener. You know, if Le'Veon Bell was there, he'd be a great player. He's not going to be a great player in New York for the Jets. It's a shame that, that you know egos got in the way there. You know, he had a good thing, and he uh, now the Steelers have you know not nearly as good a running back situation, and and Bell's career is taking a, a dive. I guess he's catching his check, so so that's what he wanted. All matters. Yeah. Josh Jacobs, man. Josh Jacobs. Don't sleep on Josh Jacobs. I like him a I lot. Love him. He's great. This Raiders running back. I will be drafting him over Joe Mixon in a heartbeat. As you should. As should most people. All right. Any final comments, anybody? I think we've covered most everything we need to cover. That's right. 
we coming back next week or we're going to wait for week one? What, what's the plan, Chris? Um, I think, mm, oh, we'll figure it out. Maybe show next week, maybe not. Because, uh, yeah, just we wanted to get a show out this week because this is when gonna, drafts really ramp up these last nice. these last couple of weeks here. So, uh, no bears. Yeah. Not no bears, no bears. Yeah. Avoid the bears. Avoid the bears. Avoid the bears. Hey, as someone who works for someone in the, the NFC North, you know, I'm, I'm well behind that statement. Avoid the bears, the Packers, the Vikings. Uh, but so yeah, we're we're back. We're doing it. We're as long as fantasy football is rolling, we're gonna roll with this. Um, you can follow us on. Oh, that's right. I forgot. There's a Twitter address for this that we we go on on Sundays and live tweet and things like that. Uh, it is, I believe, it is at the fantasy hack on Twitter. Yes. And uh, the fantasy hack at ChristopherMedia.net if you want to send us an email. And yeah, we're going to get back into the swing of things here. You know, it, it's, it's, yeah. Fantasy football is a shot at having something normal this year. Yeah, we'll be glad to answer your questions, your tweets. We, you know, we'll, yeah. We'll tell you, we'll tell it like it is. Uh, as you know, take it with a grain of salt. The first rule of fantasy football is trust your gut. Yeah. If we tell you something and you feel something in your gut, go with your gut first, because it's fantasy and that's part of it. Yeah, but I feel we sh- I should remind you that we each took down a, a trophy last year, so yeah. yes, yep. got to put that out there too. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody, and uh, we'll we'll catch you next time. Yep. Next week. Adios. 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 Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. There's a new Home Depot now open on Maurice Avenue in Masspath. And as home improvement projects go, this is a big one. Use the product locator on our app for an in-store map to find what you need fast. And check out our new pickup lockers. They make online shopping a breeze. Of course, one thing's not new, our everyday low prices. The Home Depot, now open near Maurice Avenue and Long Island Expressway in Masspath. And always open at homedepot.com. The Home Depot, how doers get more done. Sporty. ChristopherMedia.net